Good afternoon YouTube, it's Captain Nabs here with you once again. Uh, welcome back to the channel. I know I haven't put too many flights out there lately, but I wanted to do another flight today to show off something uh, new I've gotten uh, my hands on. In case you can't tell from this fantastic perspective of the uh, Q400 down here, I have recently obtained Chase Plane. And uh, I'm going to be happy to try and uh, show it off to you guys today. So uh, welcome uh, welcome to the video. And uh, I'm going to basically do a flight today from, uh, from uh, Toronto to Boston. Uh, in this Encore Q400, but uh, along the way I will be showing off Chase Plane. So first of all, let's just get started on this uh, flight because uh, Boston to, uh, or Toronto to Boston is not uh, terribly long in the uh, Dash 8 today. We're looking at about uh, an hour and 20 minutes in the air, but uh, by the time we get everything else done, this will turn into a two-hour video. So I'd like to keep it uh, rolling pretty quickly here. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in the flight deck. And uh, let's go ahead and start powering this thing up, getting it ready for flight. And uh, as you can notice from Chase Plane, one of the first things you notice is that things can be a lot smoother with the camera angles. And that's one thing that I'm super excited about, is that the camera angles are going to look a lot nicer here. Uh, the things that it gives you, it gives you lots of extra control, it gives you a lot finer control uh, while you're looking around the flight deck control the views nicely with a with a joystick or with a hat switch but even when you use a hat switch it doesn't it's not sudden there's a, a smoothness to the motion and you can configure the smoothness however you like so you can lots of options that you can tweak chase plane is a fantastic piece of software i've been using it for this basically be uh, the third flight i've actually taken so first impressions it's not quite the right term but uh it's uh it's still a uh uh, a very useful piece of software, and I'm, I'm just starting to learn it. I wanted to learn a little bit, just enough that uh, you know I wasn't completely fumbling around when I was using it. So, uh, catering is here. Let's get the service doors open, and that should do it. And uh, otherwise, we'll start getting this uh, show started here in this uh, Q400. So, um, for those of you, who, for those of you who don't know, I do have a. Uh, Let's see, let's start using this to more to my advantage here. So I've been using Chase Plane. I've set up a few views that I like, so we're going to just start with the, with the cockpit flow here. And uh, the way I've got it here, I've got it so it goes from the captain's seat very easily up to the overhead panel, which is where most of the systems are. So when you're checking over the flight deck, this is exactly the view you want to have. This cuts off a little bit of a corner, but uh, I like this view. I don't like the straight-on view in the flight deck. I like to look at it from the perspective of the captain. The captain would crane his neck up to the right and look at the overhead panel. Um, you could have this overhead view here. And of course, then you see everything nicely, but I, I just, I don't find it's very realistic. This is not the way anybody looks at, except maybe somebody sitting in a jump seat looks at that, that overhead panel. So I like this overhead panel look myself. So, uh, you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinions. If you like something different, by all means go with it. That's part of the fun and joy of, uh, of, uh, of, of, Flight simming and chase plane, especially customization. Lots of customization available. So, uh, yeah, let's get the seatbelts on. I just fueled the aircraft using the external control panel for our flight. Test all the caution and warning lights now to just look around the flight deck. I could use, I could scroll around with my hat switch, or I can very quickly choose a couple of uh, other views. Captain looks at the console. There we go. And back to the overhead panel. And then check the caution and warning lights as well. Everything's at 12, research fans on, AC gens on. Very good. And uh, we're also just going to have a quick look over here at the escape hatch is closed and the landing gears. And we should always test the, the uh, three green alternate landing gear lights uh, on the first flight of the day. All right, let's go ahead back to Captain's console view here, and yeah, we're just going to start over here, just adjust this very slightly. Today we're going to be doing a flight with not a whole lot of passengers, uh, only about 34 passengers uh, in my majestic control panel here. Basically that was what was auto, 31 excuse me, that was what was auto generated by my uh, sim brief. So we're going to go with that. It's going to be a little bit of a light uh, flight today. Uh, 54,000 pounds So we'll uh, for takeoff, so we'll set the numbers in here for 54,000 pounds. Uh, we're just going to do a flat five takeoff because we're in Toronto International. We got 10,000 feet on all the different runways. So 123. Okay, I'll close exit four in a second, honestly. All right, 
close the service door so that the catering truck will leave. We won't leave that door unguarded. Uh, 124. MVR is actually supposed to be 123. I read this wrong. 133, 144. We'll do it really quick here. So I know this is the tedious part of the setup. If you want to see more about Chase Plane, um, I want to go through the setup just because I think uh, it demonstrates how well you can move around with Chase Plane, uh, what Chase Plane lets you do. So that's why uh, I definitely like to demonstrate the setup, and I just like to reinforce it for anybody who's watching, who's trying to learn the Dash 8. I try to reinforce good habits every time I uh, teach on the Dash 8 here, every time I do anything, demonstrate anything on the Dash 8. So this is not really so much a teaching lesson as this is just trying to uh, demonstrate um, chase plane. But that being said, I'm going to try and make the most of it here. Uh, so there's an app source. And uh, I guess what we should do is we should get the uh, ATIS here in Toronto. And uh, let's just request that really quickly here. Today they're departing off 2-3 and 2-4 right. So we can set our heading bug all the way around for 237. I know this airport like the back of my hand, so that's why I'm doing lots of the stuff. But you'll see it in the charts, uh, all the information here for the uh, departure. So taxi light, all that stuff is out. Uh, we hit... Uh, Go around and uh, have to just check one thing here in a second. Heading, Alt, Cell, and uh, stand by. I just realized my condition levers don't work, so just stand by one moment and we'll make, get them working. Alright, and you're back with me. And now the condition levers work. I always do that test because I use a throttle quadrant and I have different controls for jets and for props, so we need to make sure that we've got it set properly for whatever we're flying today. Uh, so 3013 is the altimeter setting today, so we'll set that as well while we're here. There we go, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty nice day out there today, so we'll set terrain. Uh, we'll come back to the FMSs in a minute here. Center console, everything looks good. Throttle quadrant, everything looks good, and we just skip back to the pedestal here. And everything's centered here. The trims are centered or very close to it anyways. It's a little more close to centered. There we go. And I realize that the uh, <laughs> the music is now playing for you. I've probably made it pretty quiet. I try to try to balance that down. But let me just kill that music. I find it... Uh, not that it's annoying, but... Uh, Uh, announcement script stop, but I find that uh, it'll be distracting for you from me trying to set up here. So uh, there we go. So let's set up. Go ahead and set up our route today. So today our route is from Toronto, and we're going to do a departure from Toronto. Today's departure is the uh, Kepta. No, sorry, the TBAT two departure. We're going to depart off two four right. I expect based on our direction of flight on the. TVAD 2, departure off runway 24 right, Natum, and I believe that's missing a couple, Natum, TVAD and APA should be in there as well, so uh, just because of the way that SIDS and Toronto are coded, sometimes they end up a little bit... Uh, out of whack here. Uh, and I'm also going to delete this no link. Uh, then we're going to go to an uh, intersection called Hank. H-A-N-K-K. -K. Jossie. Actually, what we can do. Uh, list airways. We should be doing this as the airways. So Q935 all the way to Gardner. And then from Gardner, we do the arrival into Boston. So first we have to put in Boston as an airport. Enter, and then we can do flight plan menu, arrive. And uh, pick a run, pick a runway, any runway. <laughs> There's a lot of them in Boston. Uh, our flight plan estimated that we would use 3-3 left for arrivals. That's not a very typical arrival runway, but we can change this when we're en route. So we're just going to put that in there. The important thing is we put in the Gardner for arrival. Uh, 
second. Sorry, <laughs> what is my route here? Was I guessing too much? Uh, it's Q935 to Fabe in the direct Albany and the Gardener for arrival, so that's interesting. Alright, so uh, we'll put in an ILS for 33 left. I have been, but the important thing is that uh, Hank, Jossie, Fabin. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll bring Albany up. So we type in after Fabin, we're supposed to go direct to Albany. So I put an error in there, but now we got Fabin, Albany, and then we do the Gardener uh, for arrival after that. Perfect. That's all set up. Quick uh, visit to the fuel page to set that up as well. Again, we'll use uh, my majestic control panel here. Oh, I closed it. <laughs> that was silly of me. There it is. <clears throat> Fortunately, all the information is still in there. Uh, so our ZFW today, 47,634. I've been doing uh, quite a few flights lately with close to uh, max weight in this thing, so it's nice to see such a low weight in here for once. 47,634. And... Uh, then I'll just hit up my flight plan here for the rest of my information. Uh, let's see, alternate fuel. It's not very far to the alternate. Providence is our alternate for Boston. It's a beautiful day out on the East Coast, so we don't need a very far alternate. And 13 and 22 for our final reserve numbers. We're not planning any extra, but, uh, so we just want to see what the total number is when we get there. And uh, fuel on board right now. Uh, let's see here. What we can do is just pull up the fuel page really quick, pop that out just to see 6,500 pounds in the tank, and away we go. Done. Last but not least, set the ETA time zone offset, minus 4, and we're good. The one thing we can do, of course, is then cross fill all the information to the FO side. And we need to accept that before we can do anything else. Perfect. All right, the only thing the FO needs to do is turn on the brakes and make sure that they are in FMS mode as well. For some reason, the cross fill did not work. Strange. All right. All right, so we got the flight plan cross-fill, the fuel cross-fill, hopefully now, and it looks like this time it triggered the FMS to the right place, so we're good. All right, so we're ready for uh, a quick little takeoff briefing here. The flight deck preparation is done. Uh, so today I'm going to actually pull out my charts to do this um, because I want to show you the proper way to do everything. That's the way I like to fly. I like to fly this as professionally as possible at all times. So uh, today we're going to be doing... Uh, we're going to be doing okay so let's start this off properly so this will be a uh, let's see here this will be a 54,000 pound flap uh, five takeoff with noise and considerations takeoff power is uh will be normal takeoff power nine percent bleeds on speeds v1 123 vr 123 v2 124 v fry 133 v climb 144 the level off altitude today 1600 feet asl Turning master warning engine failure direction control issue prior to V1. You are out. Call abort. We'll stop the aircraft on the runway and do an emergency. In the event of an engine failure after V1, it's considered in flight emergency with no immediate actions prior to uh, 1600 feet except for raising the gear. At 1600, we will level off, accelerate to V fry, retract the flaps, continue at V climb to uh, 3000 feet once established in the climb. We'll actually emergency. In the event of an immediate return, we'll circle back to land on uh, runway 24 right 23. Any runway here will be suitable for this aircraft. The uh, departure today is the TVAD 2 departure uh, off of runway 24 right. Uh, so we're going to be doing, uh, uh, let's see here, off 24 right. The initial climb is, uh, unless otherwise signed by ATC, uh, let's just check this out and make sure it's all right on the uh, FMS here. Let's do it this way. Nope. <laughs> Chase plane's not working as well as, uh, as I thought, huh? All right, so let's just check this out here. So, uh, Unless otherwise assigned by ETC, climb heading 237 to 1,000 feet, and then a left turn heading 235, uh, or as assigned, and expect radar vectors to Maven, or as assigned, then proceed via the depicted route. Unless otherwise assigned by ETC, maintain 3,000. Aircraft assigned a turn at takeoff, commence the turn at 1,100 feet. So if we are given a turn at takeoff, 1,100 feet, the top altitude is 3,000 feet, that's in there. And uh, the fixes after Maven, we have Natum, TVAD, and APA. 
and then that's the end of the star, or the end of the sit, excuse me. Um, okay, that's basically it. I don't have any special considerations for this. Uh, I just want you to sit back, enjoy the video. Hopefully, you learn something, and uh, hopefully, I show you some of the fun stuff that you can do with uh, with Chase Plane. All right, so we'll just put that back into electrical mode. Nope, that did not take for some reason. Probably because I keep clicking in uh, chase plane and chase plane, and it takes the focus away from this window. So, all right, but uh, it's a very useful piece of software. I've got some hotkeys programmed in. I'm gonna uh, gonna be showing you some stuff as we go on here. So, uh, with that being said, we're gonna be uh, one thing I should be doing already. I should have requested boarding a while ago. For some reason, it's not. Uh, it doesn't think that I can board. Uh, let's go ahead and check out an exterior view really quick. Front right. Catering's long gone. I think uh, for some reason my GSX crashed, so stand by and we'll reset it here. Alright. So we're back with you. GSX is reset and now we'll, uh, we should have started boarding the flight a little earlier, but that's okay. We'll board it now. 34 people. Shouldn't take too long to board, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, going up to the wrong side. you got to go the other side, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's chase him around with our tail camera. Nope. How about this view? And then you can watch the boarding from there. I will have to actually hop back in the flight deck, of course. Hit the FMC. And open some doors. Hello. I just realized we've been running on batteries this whole time, haven't we? <laughs> we never had the GPU connected. Uh, this is what happens when you start talking and you're not paying attention. Alright, so let's do this. Uh, it's a little bit late for the GPU now, so let's go ahead and just go to the f overhead panel and just start the APU. Before we kill the batteries altogether here. That'll give me something to do while the GPU is start or while the APU is starting. We'll quickly do the originating before start check. So the external power in APU external power is uh, our APU is coming on. Go back to that. Recirc fan is on. Emergency lights are armed. And uh, anti skid is on. External check is all complete. Gear pins are stowed. Alt gear door and landing gear inhibit switch. I have to just look from over here. I don't have one set up for this. I should set one up for that view. I can set up a different view for that. I'll show you one later. I'll set that up later. Uh, and the flight deck preparation is complete left and right. The originally before start check is complete with the APU generator online. Alright, we'll open those up as well so they're ready to go. And we'll do the before start check as well. So circuit breakers, and I can also, I haven't yet, but I will eventually set up a view of the circuit breakers. But in the meantime, there are the circuit breakers. And on the FO side as well, perfect. Um, escape hatch. I could set up a whole sequence of, of cameras for this. It is closed. Battery master main aux standby is on. And uh, let's go now to seat belts are on. Flight taxi is taxi. Yaw damper is on. Fuel quantity 6,500 pounds. That checks. And uh, emergency brake pressure is on and check. Trims one, two, and three set. Power levers are disc, and condition levers are fuel off. Takeoff briefing is complete. The before start checklist is complete, and just in time uh, to finish importing the aircraft. The only thing we have left to do here is uh, just finish boarding the bags. And I think the bags are still driving over. So, what can you do? Sometimes you're waiting for the bags. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the captain speaking. We're just waiting for the bags to arrive. Uh, we wouldn't want to go without them. Once they arrive, we'll uh, be closing the doors, pushing back for our one hour and 20 minute flight back to uh, Boston. On behalf of the entire crew here at uh, WestJet Encore, we hope you enjoy your service today. All right, let's go ahead uh, while we're waiting and let's hit the radios. Let's get uh, Boston Center up here. I mean, Correction, Toronto Center. I don't even know where I am anymore. All right, there's Toronto. Toronto uh, Center. Good evening. It's uh, Encore 3606. Looking for the IFR to Boston. Encore 3606. Toronto Center. Good evening, sir. You're clear to 
Boston Logan via the Chiva 2 departure off of transition flight plan route. Depart off of 24 right, squawk 5534. Okay, uh. Encore 3606 is cleared to Boston via the TVAD 2 departure, APA transition, and the flight plan route. Departure off 24 right, the squawk code 5534. Encore 3606, read back is correct. Push back and start at your discretion. Call me ready for taxi. Push and start at our discretion. Call you ready for taxi. Encore 3606. All right, and here we go. Uh, all right, so we got that up and running. We get the baggage yet. Where is the baggage? Here it comes. I see the baggage train. <laughs> ah. As soon as it gets done, as soon as it gets here, we'll be ready to go. So while we're out here, though, I, I could show you some things anyways. I can show you some of the nice views I've set up. And actually, yeah, what I can do as well is show you some of the static views that I set up. Uh, Toronto's my home base airport, so I've set up some other views for Toronto. So here is... Uh, some static exterior views. Oh. Boy, she really didn't like that. There we go. Alright, took a second for it to calculate where those were, but here is uh, my static exterior view of the terminal of the of the terminal three apron here. Uh, five and six. Wow, the scenery's taking a long time to load. <laughs> I need some, I need some better drives here. Chase plane can do more than this than my scenery uh, allows here. <laughs> but one thing I can do, and it's a neat little feature that I've, I've I've discovered, is I can do something called binoculars, where I can zoom in with the binoculars. I don't think I can. Oh, I can. Oh, I didn't think I could do this in a static view. I can move the static view around just like any other view. Uh, and what I can do is I have binocular mode, where I can zoom in like I'm looking through a pair of binoculars, and there's our airplane over there on Gate Bravo 22 over at Terminal 3. So you could do some really neat stuff with these cameras. You know, airports that you visit a lot, you can set up a bunch of cameras to uh, take uh, p pictures at places that you like to be. Um, so there's the view from the actual uh, Terminal 1 apron camera. Um, unfortunately, it uh, does take some time to reload some of the scenery than when I do jump around like this, but then you can zoom in nicely. So there's the zoom, uh, the binocular function. I can zoom in on my gate. Unfortunately, it's another key that I use for something else, so it seems to be jumping around into and out of the airplane here. Uh, so we can go back to, uh, what else have we got here? There's the bags being loaded. So I've got all sorts of views. I can jump between them nice and quickly here. Uh, a lot of these are preloaded from the internet, uh, from some of my other... Alright, looks like we're done loading. So we can probably close up the doors and get ready to go here. Perfect. So let's go ahead and prepare for pushback and departure. And we're going to do uh, just a straight back push. And no, we don't have to start the engines before the push. What we will have to do, though, is take the bridge away. Generating some tugs. Alright, so everybody's on board. Alright, we're good to close. Go ahead and remove the jet bridge. And, uh, let's... There goes the jet bridge. And the other thing we have to do as well, of course, is then actually close the doors, so we'll have to go back in the flight deck for that. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. All right, so we got permission for pushback. We've got uh, the ramp guys are with us here. Sometimes these doors take more than one push to close here. Uh, what I could also do is do this. I need to actually be able to see that doors button as well, so I might have to just zoom this out a little bit. Okay, we got two door, one door closed. We got two doors still open here. Continue closing the doors. I could also switch to the exterior view to watch the doors close if I wanted to. Turn it left. Nope, she didn't start closing. There goes the door. Alright, and now we are ready for the before start, uh, or the start approved checklist. So start approved checklist. No steering is, uh, let's just check it here, is off. And, uh, transponder. Actually, I need a pedestal. Transponder is going to on alt. There it is. 
And uh, let's go doors and fueling lights are out. AP fleet is off, and the anti collisions go into red. Starter proof check is complete, and he's ready for the push. So we can go ahead and go there. And away we go. All right, and we're in the pushback, ready to start engine two. There we go. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the electrical system. Now I got the electrical system up. Perfect. All right. And what I can also do is ask to look at the right wing. Clear on two. Thank you. Starting two. And while that's starting, rotation's observed. I'm also just going to quickly switch to the exterior view. Alright, another couple feet before we go. Let's go back to monitoring the engine instruments. All right, so that's engine adapter heat. Should be anyways. That's engine adapter heat. All right, looks like we got a good start. And if we go to the front left, let's just go a little bit higher. Uh, front right's a little bit higher. Yeah, that's pretty good there. Stop here and complete the pushback procedure. Parking brake is set. We're going to have a quick look at the left wing. And it's all clear. Clear on one. Starting one. And we have rotation. Bring up the condition lever. He's undoing the pins right now. And out it comes. Alright. Let's park and break. And that looks like a pretty normal start on one as well. So it looks like we're just about ready to go here. He's walking one way, that guy walks another way. Alright, everybody's all clear? Alright. Uh, he's walking over there to, to marshal me. Left is clear. Right is clear. All right. Let's bring. Let's uh, unfeather the props. We'll watch for those to go up to ten twenty, and we'll go ahead and do the after start checklist. Have a good trip, he says. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thanks for all your help. And away they go. All right, and a quick look overhead here, and good, the AC gens are online. We can take the a APU off, bus tie off, ice protection all is required, and the FO has to put the bleeds on, set the flap, control locks off. Just getting used to this whole idea of chase plane, and it's a really useful function. Uh, really neat, lots of very useful stuff here going on, but I just I'm, I'm still getting used to the key presses and everything to go with it. All right, a quick little uh, rudder check here. We can pop this out uh, if you can see the rudder moving down there. That's the first light of the day. Really, we should be doing this rudder check with the number one red hide disabled and the number two red hide disabled. That's the number two red hide. Gosh, warning lights. And then all of them. Perfect. And then we also do the flight control check. So elevators, ailerons. Perfect. All right. And uh, last but not least, I have to just get the nose wheel steering on, put on the radar, standby, and we're ready for the after start checklist. So after start checklist, start select light is out. External power APU are both off. Bleed air is min and on. Ice detection is standard. And uh, caution and warning lights. Still got elevator press. Did I not uh, reset that? Hold on. I did not. That's why that light is still on. 
And that's why we have a checklist. Now it's going down. It'll go off in a second. Caution and warning lights. Any second now, it's going to go away. There it is. Check. Just the parking brake. Um, battery temps and loads. Check. Tank ox pumps uh, are on. Auto feathers, AF select, engine rate is normal. Take off power 90%. Step by high press, P2 controller on. High press and quantity were checked. High three and elevators were uh, high three elevators were checked, flight controls are checked and free, and uh, the ice pressure, FO should check it over here, checks, uh, flap, can do it from here, five, set, and, oh, I can't do it from there because I can't see, <laughs> I could move this camera forward, uh, if I can figure out how to control it, hold on, there we go, flap is five, set, and indicating, condition levers are max, now i got to go back to the captain's view for sure for this one, No steering is on. Radar Navcom is set and the PFD MFD ED check after start checklist is complete. Alright, let's go back to a normal view for taxiing. Let's just take the parking brake off. Go to normal view for taxiing and call for taxi. Toronto Center uh, Encore 3606 ready for taxi. Encore 3606 from a 24 right to the 313. Taxi Alpha Julia, Bravo, Charlie, hold short, 24 right. Okay, Taxi Alpha Julia, Bravo, Charlie, hold short, 24 right for uh, Encore 3606. Alright, Alpha Juliet, Bravo, Charlie, if in doubt, write it down. That way you don't have a chance to forget. Alright, and away we go. And you, see the, you can see the control column moving. I have the uh, steering tiller linked to the control column. And uh, I could do a little much better job of looking where I'm going here with this nice uh, chase plane joystick control. And then, of course, it always fogs up. And this is one thing I really am going to have to complain to uh, Majestic about because I flew this airplane for a long time. And I never saw this airplane fog up like this. I saw this airplane fog up on the inside two, maybe three times in my my entire career. Not like this. Not like every every single flight right now in this aircraft. So while he's going, we'll get the taxi light on so that the next person will actually see is coming. Yes, I realize we're not on the center line took off really quick there, faster than I anticipated, so let's get just back onto the center line a little better. Hopefully we don't carve up too much of that uh, baggage cart as we go by there. Alright. Vehicles bloody everywhere in this airport. <laughs> so one thing I don't like is these vehicles taxiing on the taxiways because it's, it really should be exclusive for aircraft. So we'll go around him. Switch to our tail cam. Sixteen fifty-five. That's permanent. Send four thousand. Okay, down to four thousand. There, Canada, the sixteen fifty-five. That's an interesting view. That's one I've never managed to actually spot in uh, in uh, using the default. All clear on the right, and around we go to the left. Using the default uh, controls in uh, prepared, I've never managed to get a view like that. So, chase plane is just fantastic for moving the camera. Maybe not the. Maybe not the the, the fastest at moving things around, but in terms of maximum flexibility, great. And you can change the speed. You can adjust the speed. Everything pretty much in Chase Plane is adjustable. Uh, there's a few things. There's a few suggestions I might even have for them to improve the software even more. It's still technically in beta as I as I do this video. It's technically still beta software. For beta software, it's extremely polished. It's on the verge of publication of a full fledged, uh, full version release because it is just it's fantastic software at this point. Very well done. 
Let's see how well. Oh, nope, off the center line a little bit there. Let's get it back on there. This is where we have to dodge to the right slightly, so I should probably actually pay attention to what I'm doing here. Uh, stop playing with the chase plane so much, but it is such a good piece of software, I just can't help but want to play with it a little bit here. Uh, you know, in, in, for the flying itself, it's not it's not so critical, you know, and you can get by certainly with what was prepared before. But if you're making videos, and certainly the one thing I always felt about the videos when I was the one thing I felt about the videos whenever I was making the videos was that I felt like very often when I was moving from one view to the next, it was just very jumpy, and that's one thing. That, you know, like I felt cognizant of as as I was trying to produce videos is that things were very jumpy from the external views to internal views, very jumpy. But even within the internal views, things were very jumpy. The things were just sort of clip clop from place to place. And even when I was using the hat switch to sort of look around, it was not smooth. It was you're moving around in chunks, and it just didn't feel very natural. This chase plane just feels natural, even if I use the hat switch and chase plane right now to move around and look around the flight deck a little bit, like say to do the taxi check. It's it's weighted. It's got some inertia to it. It doesn't just it isn't just chunky. It just sort of it moves the way a person would naturally move with some acceleration, which is just fantastic. So uh, let's do the taxi check that I'm speaking of. Taxi light is on. The altimeters again. Uh, feels like I'm going very fast in this airplane here. Three zero, one three. Oops. Three set. And uh, takeoff warning. It's right down here. Check. And uh, cabin secure. We'll say that the flight attendant's called the cabin secure. The taxi checklist is complete. I'm kind of spending as much time playing with chase plane as I am trying to taxi this airplane, so I should really focus on the, on the task at hand here while I'm handling the aircraft make it a lot easier <laughs> to stay on the center line. All right, so this should be Victor Taxiway right here. It's kind of hard to see some of these signs, but what if I was to use my binocular key? Oh, look up a little more. All right, I see the sign for Charlie up ahead now. Wow, that alone Wow, that was that was totally worth it because so often signs, taxiway signs, so hard to see as you're taxiing by, but there it is. The sign says Charlie. I gotta bind it to a different key though because it's set to my. It's I've set it to be Alt S, which S is my key for switching between interior and exterior views. I'm spending more time looking around than I'm focusing on taxing the airplane at this point. <laughs> Alright, left turn on Charlie. Sounds like there's actually traffic on final for runway 24 right today, so in case you haven't figured it out, I am as always flying on the VATSIM network. I, I, I like to exclusively fly on, uh, produce my videos flying on VATSIM because I just find that the ATC, even when it's quiet, when there's not much ATC, it still adds uh, a level of realism. I just find, I hate to use the term boring, but just uh, without some level of ATC, I find, uh, I don't know. I, I, I just I, f I feel that it's, it's something that we all should we should all should be doing if, if we're we're having a fun flight perhaps not but uh, certainly if, certainly if you want to simulate any kind of airline flying ATC and dealing with ATC is a huge part of that and to go on and to go and, and fly in uh, prepared or flight sim FSX X plane anything without any kind of ATC and text only ATC just doesn't cut it either even the even the uh, prepared built in uh, you know uh, ATC just cut doesn't cut it when you compare it to real world or real real people in VATSIM uh, you know issuing real instructions based on other aircraft and, and where you are it just I nothing quite competes with VATSIM I think for for real really kind of completing the total immersion into the into the uh, flying world well, at least winter is finally over there's one thing I've noticed actually <laughs> taxiing around is that winter is finally over in Toronto Although I think it actually did in real life snow outside today. 
But uh, in the flight sim world, winter is over. The grass is slowly turning kind of green. I heard someone was on final for 2-4, right? But I haven't seen them yet. I don't see... Oh, oh, actually I just saw, as I just said that, a little speck of detail straight up there at almost at our 12 o'clock. Oh, look up a little higher. Right there. <laughs> I love this binocular effect. It's actually a really useful effect. I didn't think I was actually gonna uh, gonna gain that much joy and fun out of it, but really quite uh, quite useful. You just have to center what you want to zoom in on in your view. But there it is. Definitely a WestJet aircraft. Tower Encore 3606, ready for takeoff, runway 24 right. Okay, hold short, runway 24 right, Encore 3606. Well, I thought we'd try to get away between the arrivals, but apparently not, so we'll just have to play with the camera view. And, uh... Deal with it as it comes, I guess. Yeah, I'm trying to be a little bit more focused in my taxiing here. It's while I've, I've shut up a little bit. <laughs> trying to do a little bit better job taxiing the aircraft now. And not incur the runway. There we go. The nice thing about the Dash 8 is you can slow it down and stop it just with the, par uh, the power levers alone. There's parking brake. And the other thing we should do is take the taxi light off. And let's see if Air we can switch this traffic. Don't see him yet. There's our Alpha. external Alpha. view. There's WestJet out there. Getting ready to taxi in. Taxi terminal three by Charlie Alpha. Alpha for WestJet five. One thing that's very different, and I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting used to the idea, is that uh, unlike the spot, um, you know, the the spot plane views in um, here he comes, I see him now in uh, the default camera settings, uh, you can't just sort of pan around the aircraft. If you just your camera is fixed relative to the aircraft, and you just simply look around from that camera position, so you have to move the camera position relative to the aircraft. Let's again, have a look, see. Comes the Air Canada flight. You know, I really would not have thought that uh, this binocular feature was quite as useful, but especially flying on the VATSIM network with other airplanes out there that are usually quite far away, <laughs> that uh, you usually don't see as anything more than a couple of specks in the distance, uh, it's actually quite interesting. So let's do this now. Let's go ahead and do this. So there's one more static camera. The nice thing about Chase Plane is it automatically generates all sorts of static camera views around all the airports when you first load it. It looks at all your airports, generates static views, and there goes the airplane. How fantastic was that? Well, that was with minimal setup. I didn't have to do anything other than click to get this preset view at the threshold of this runway. All right, probably about now we should be clear to position. Center controller's probably busy. I used a lot of that runway. <laughs> and if I go to 6 left... Line up only runway 248, Encore 3606. Alright. Cleared to line up. And let's just get that taxi light back on. And because we're taxiing onto the runway... Air Canada 1655 is clear of the active. Clear left. Clear right. Air Canada 1655. Strobe Alpha. lights on. Alpha. Didn't mean to stop Alpha. rolling there, just meant to slow down a little bit. Alright, and lineup check. Cabin crew, please be seated for takeoff. Okay, to the gate. Alright, uh, lineup Alpha check. FA notification is PA. Transponder uh, is Air on. Out. TCAS is TA only. 
3606, winds 2408, clear for takeoff 248. Clear for takeoff 248, Encore 3606. Uh, TCAS TA only MFDs, terrain, and terrain, lead air is min and on, and flight taxi is flight, line of checks complete, we're cleared to go, let's get the landing lights on in the corner there, let's line ourselves back up here, and I always like to have my screens up here for the actual takeoff, because I need to see what I'm doing, that being said, they don't need to be that tall. And away we go. Alright, take off, check power. Power is set. There's 80 knots. There's V1, rotate. Positive rate, gear up. Now you probably noticed some bumping on the runway as we went there. That's also generated by chase plane. It does it a little bit while you're taxing, but when you start rolling down the runway, it really generates those bumps. Another nice little added, added touch of realism. They've got a bunch of realism motions. They don't all work in the dash eight. All right, there's 1600. So flaps zero. Bleeds on, climb power, and autopilot on. Kind of turned a little bit by mistake there. And uh, Toronto, uh, Toronto Center, Encore 3606 with you airborne 30, 2600 climbing for 3000. And there's Alt Star. Encore 3606, sir, you're identified. Left direct Maven on course, climb flight level 250. Left direct Maven on course, climb flight level 250, Encore 3606. So let's get the altitude in there so we can start climbing, back in pitch hold. And we won't have to do power reduction at all. And direct Maven, direct Maven number 4, enter. And LNAV is armed, LNAVing to Maven. And just confirm the altitude for Encore 3606, was that flight level 230 or 250? Encore 3606, flight level 250. Thank you, flight level 250, Encore 3606. Alright, so here we go, we're L-naving around to Maven. And we are airborne on our way to Boston. And now that the aircraft is flying, we can take a moment to admire the scenery, look out the window, ooh, ah. Uh, and also just admire how well it works with Chase Plane, and just to look around the flight deck. Invisible FO. Alright, and what we should do is the after takeoff checklist as well. We'll pitch down a little bit, about six degrees. And we can go ahead and do it this way, or we can do it whichever way we like. Alright, and after takeoff checklist, so landing gear is up, flap zero, climb power is set. Uh, Bleed air is Norman on. Auto feather is off. Tank ox pumps are off. High pumps are norm. Uh, engine temps and pressures. Again, everything checks. Everything's in the green. Ice protection. Standard. Cabin press temp controls. Check. Uh, differentials building cabins climbing. And the FA notification cabin crew. Er, can you go chime the FAs. And cycle through the views again to get to where we wanted. So if I use my keys, I can actually cycle through a lot smoother with less clicking than I was doing before. It's, you know, I'm just sort of trying to do everything all at once here. And already we've already almost made it up to, to 30,000, or to 10,000 here, sorry. 30,000. 10,000. Just go back, pan back for a quick view of Toronto passing, falling out quickly behind us. Prepare tries to quickly reload those textures as I look in that direction. <laughs> Alright. I need a solid state drive to get the uh, textures to load a little faster, but 
you get the idea anyways. And, and my point here is not to demonstrate how well my computer works, but to demonstrate the fun and the joy of chase plane. So there we are, we're through 10,000. So again, we'll go overhead, we'll go uh, lights off. Pressurization checks, four, two, four. And uh, seatbelts can come off. There we go. Have a look outside. How's the climb going? The climb's doing okay. We're on course. Let's just sync up the heading bug. And everything's coming together nicely for us here. Uh, temperature's minus 20 out. It's a pretty chilly night, so uh, we're sort of just scraping the end of that layer. Uh, first thing I'll do is just put the prop heat on, just in case it's necessary. And then we're going to trim out the airplane a little bit. And then we can talk a little bit about chase plane once we get up into cruise here. So we're going to be in cruise pretty quickly here at this rate. And then I'm really going to show you some of what chase plane can do. I'm going to show you the interface and show you how to use it. Um, some of what I've learned already. Uh, it's just a great piece of software. It's very, very well written. Uh, for anyone who's worried about the fact that it's supposedly in the beta stage still, don't be, don't be worried about that. The beta stage is... Uh, it, it's it's very solid at this point extremely solid I don't have I've had really no issues with chase plane to this point um, it's basically almost a fully functional piece of software it's one of those it feels like it's gonna be one of those pieces of software that stays in beta beta phase forever or at least potentially longer than it should although no I won't say it's forever because it does also feel like there's a big community supporting it the there's a lot of developers who are, are there's a, the developers actively doing stuff to improve it to to respond to any bug reports that do come across do come out so um, I don't feel like it's going to be in beta forever in that sense because I, it does feel very well supported it feels like they are going to getting ready to release the first official version soon but it's just one of those pieces of software that like just because it's beta doesn't mean it doesn't work really well there's lots of beta software out there that works really well so let's go ahead and let's have a look outside have a look at some nice views of the airplane here oh I just love that view the size of that nose <laughs> and you can see Toronto in the distance again prepared struggling to load my textures in the distance there what if we do the zooming in there? What other ones have we got here? If I just look around the whole airplane, you can see Toronto falling behind us in the background there. The tail view, that's a neat view. <laughs> not one you see very much. I don't think it's quite centered. I feel like it's not quite centered. Maybe it's because the airplane's not flying quite straight. You'll notice that this, the cuts are probably looking a little bit smoother now than they were before. Toronto is probably not the best place to demonstrate chase plane just because uh, the intensity of the scenery there slowed uh, my frame rate quite substantially. My frame rate is basically all, not quite, but almost triple what it was <laughs> sitting on the ground in Toronto. What a nice airplane though overall. What a quiet evening in Toronto. And here we go through 18, so... Uh, we can do stuff, we can play with the camera, move it forward, so I can see the uh, barometer switch, so I can push it. Uh, ooh, I can finally do something I haven't been able to do yet in this airplane, and that is reach down, look, or move my head down. Oh, look at this, press the standard button. Oh, how fantastic is that? Because there is a standard button here. Just playing with my controls here. Pan it just a little bit more so that you can. Whoop, way too far. Whoa, way too far. There we go. Down a little more, and then you can just zoom right in. And you can just say, there. This is the button that I have not been able to press for I don't know how long now. <laughs> because from a normal captain's height, you can't see it. Um, ah. How fantastic that you can press that. I thought I was never going to be able to press it unless I ever got, unless I got myself a track IR. <laughs> oh well. Back to looking around the airplane, passing another waypoint, pitch down a little bit so we don't lose too much speed in the climb. And you can just keep looking around the airplane and chase plane just makes it so nice to look out the window, so smooth to look everywhere. Try and center that. Hit the camera mode. You can see the uh, mouth of the Welland Canal there, such as it is. Niagara River. Fantastic. 
Here's something I don't see very often anymore. The view from the right side of the airplane. Since I always try to fly from the left seat, it's, <laughs> it's odd to see the panel from this angle, but you could totally set up a whole set of views in this, from this angle if you were so inclined. How are we doing here? 210 for 250. Once we level off, I really, I'll really i pull out the interface for Chase Plane and I'll show you what it can do because it's a, it's a fantastic piece of software. Really good. Lots of lots of bells and whistles. It really makes a big difference. Um, certainly for me, producing videos on a regular basis, trying to, trying to pre present some nice videos for you to look at. This really helps do that. It smooths out some of the really hard cuts that I've been doing in the last since I started streaming videos uh, several months ago anyway, <laughs> since I started making videos. So I hope that uh, you know, uh, I hope that all you in the YouTube channel will appreciate this. This is as much, I think, a gift to you as it is to me. I'm really enjoying it, and I really love the smoothness of it, but, you know, I could, I could live with what I was doing before. The one that really sort of set me to do this was the Mad Dog, I think, more than anything. More than the Dash 8. The Dash 8 is great, but I had sort of mastered looking around the Dash 8, but the Mad Dog, the overhead panels are so massive, uh, uh, I, and uh, the Leonardo came up with with a really great feature for those of you that don't have it. Uh, it's basically a little pop out window that you can uh, click on all the various views in the flight deck, and um, you can see everything. You know, you can see everything that happens in the flight deck. Um, or you can you can click on all the different panels and you can hop around from one panel to another in the flight deck. And it was really Toronto Center West Jet. It's, it's a really great team. feature, but it's very jumpy. So for me as the pilot flying, the pilot controlling the video, I know exactly what I'm clicking on, I know exactly what I'm looking at, but for anyone watching, I imagine the jumpiness is a little bit annoying. You sort of you lose your reference as to where in the in the flight deck you are for a, mo for a moment, even just for a second or two, but especially when you start doing a whole checklist and you're jumping around from place to place, very frustrating. So being able to have a much more smooth head motion, so instead of just going from looking at looking out the window to looking at, at the overhead panel, to now have Oh, a nice smooth transition to the overhead panel. A nice tr smooth transition. Well, that wasn't very smooth for some reason, but... I had to think about that one. But a nice smooth transition where the, the camera moves uh, in a gentle, smooth manner so that you have some reference as to where we're looking. And that was probably a call I should be looking at. That was 240, climbing 250. So I think this is going to be as much a gift for uh, the people watching this channel as it is for me flying this airplane. Although I have to say that I do like the, the joystick control. This, this camera is fantastic. It really is. Enjoying it a lot. All right. Almost there. Here's the Alt Star. It's a pleasure to be here. Leveling at 250, perfect. And uh, we're going to have to start thinking about our top drop eventually here. Uh, let's just have a quick look at the performance calculation. One hour, 17 minutes. I don't buy that for a second. We got a lot of accelerating to do here. That also uh, includes the uh, approach, so depending on what they're actually using in Boston, that may not be totally valid anymore. But you can do these nice slow pans in chase plane that you could never do. Of course, you still get a little bit Charlie of choppiness when your computer is not quite able to keep up with it. Delta, so but, uh, oh, and it's so nice. Here's the other thing that's so nice that I'm, I'm really enjoying is that it's no longer winter. <laughs> I've been looking at white, snowy terrain for so long now. I'm so happy to see some greens and some browns. Some of that Orbex uh, FTX Global I'm trying to see starting to see a little bit more <laughs> benefit from the FTS Global. It's been a very long winter of flying around in Canada. And you can do the slowest little pans around with the joystick now, too. Oh, I'm enjoying this. This is fantastic. Wow, she really does not want to accelerate, though. Zero five five five. Alright, so she's doing the acceleration, so but quickly while she's figuring out the acceleration, I'm just going to really quickly pull up uh, the arrival into Boston, and uh, I don't believe there's any real altitude restrictions on the Gardner, 
arrival, as far as I recall. But let's just check. If I can find my Boston plates, there they are, Boston. Uh, let's see here. Gardner for arrival. Uh, there are some expects, so non-turbojets expect to cross a lobby at 9,000. That's right, I remember that now. All right, so let's program that in there. It's not a hard altitude now, but it chances are it will be. So let's just program that in. Uh, lobby at 9,000. Oop, 9,000, not 90,000. And let's VNAV for lobby at 9,000. I think 800 feet per minute probably works fine. 2.58, that's fine. 37, 37 minutes to top of drop. Perfect. Just waiting for this airplane to just finish accelerating up to about 10 knots below the red line. We'll throw the cruise check out there and then I'll, I'll show you under the hood a little bit of what uh, what Chase Plane is doing for us here. In the meantime, I'm just going to enjoy a little bit more of my Global Vector and FTX Global because I really haven't had too much time to enjoy them. It's been snowy, it's been winter for a long time. Right. And I like to pick up Victor. Is there any I do enjoy flying right. in real time. I, I do enjoy flying on the actual day in real time. So. Yeah, I have been flying a lot of winter thousand. scenery. It's nice to see the summer scenery coming back. All right, that looks like about all I'm getting out of this airplane today. So let's go ahead and do the cruise check, which means dish levers back to 850. And uh, let's see here. All right, uh, cruise check, altimeters, uh, let's see here. We've got uh, one, two, and can I do it in here even? Three set, <laughs> that's nice, I can do it in here. Uh, I cross-checked, and uh, power is set, fuel uh, is checked, we're going to have 3,000 on board at uh, destination. Seatbelts are off. Lights are all as required, and uh, lights are as required. Cabin press is uh, in the green for two five zero eight thousand. That's all perfect. And uh, twenty four ice test will say is done. Cruise check complete. All right, YouTube. So now that the uh, cruise check is complete, I'm going to cut off uh, part one right there. And uh, when we resume with part two, we're going to basically just have just the cruise flight. We're going to just show off what Chase Plane can do, have a little bit of fun, show you the whole interface. So uh, please watch part two. I hope you watch it in its entirety. It's not particularly long, and uh, I do show off a lot of what Chase Plane can do. And uh, after that, uh, in part three, we'll do the uh, approach and landing into uh, Boston. We've got the new Fly Tampa scenery installed, and uh, it looks fantastic. So stay tuned for that as well. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out my Twitch channel, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitch, and we will see you again soon. Thanks for watching.